Hello and welcome to the eighth video in the series. It's also maybe that it's the final series in the video so far because it's the last most recent fountain pen that I acquired. Now as you can see there, very reminiscent of my first ever decent pen. Oh, this one is the gold filled version. This one's just chrome. And I got this pen from my nan. Uh, I asked her when I, as I told you in the ballpoint video, if you have watched that, I do recommend you go watch it because it describes how I've done this series so far. But if you've watched any of the other videos, you'll know that anyway. And I said, uh, she gave me a set of Parker pens and it had a ballpoint and a mechanical pencil and it was missing a third pen and I assume that might be a founder pen. So I asked her if she had any other nice pens. And she happened to have this one and this one, which is the ballpoint version, which I also just detailed in the last, uh, in the ballpoint video, sorry. And there was this. I was like, oh wow, here it is. I hadn't opened it yet. And I was just like, okay. I uh, went home. Well, I actually went to college straight afterwards after getting this, uh, these uh, pens. And I was like, okay, I got this. I also got the pen roll with it. Sorry, <laughs> I did forgot to mention that. So I was like, okay. Obviously, I had the fa I obviously had the um, mechanical pencil, a fountain pen, at the ballpoint, and I thought, what well, if this was a fountain pen, or what if it was a rollerball? I was like, okay. So I was like, I did some research online, see if they did the gold uh, um, rollerball, and they did do one. And it looks exactly the same. I was like, okay, it could be a rollerball, it could be a fountain pen. So I uncapped it, and I was like, okay, this is a. Uh, this is going to be good and I unscrewed it and I saw that it had a converter in it I was like okay it must be a fountain pen unless they put a converter in the, um, in the uh, rollerball which I highly doubt they would and lo and behold it was the fountain pen now there's a bit of ink on there like I did mention in the other one just grab my ink cloth and clean that up a bit um, like I did mention in the other video it has some uh, ink on it, I'll just pop this to the side, because it pulls a vacuum on the nib, because it's so tight, but anyway, this whole section again was covered in ink, much like um, other pens that I've uh, been given, this one was left to rot, basically, which is a real shame, obviously, nothing really happened to it, luckily, the converter stayed in place, which is this converter, which is the green converter, which is the uh, classic one. And as I mentioned in the previous video, just so I open my drawer there, um, the new one, which I bought in October, is clear. I don't think I've actually mentioned this before, but this one's a clear one, which is the new star one. Sorry about that. This one's a green one, which is the original star. And they did a green one and an orange one. One's a pushing star, which this is, and one's a screwing star. This is the green star, so it's a pushing one. You kind of see that the blue ink I have in there, which is Waterman Serenity Blue. Which is interesting. But obviously that just works standardly. I've just uh, drawn on myself there by accident. In there is actually a little spring which helps keep it in, pr in uh, place. Apart from that fell out so I had to uh, stick it back in. But yeah. So nothing really damage happened inside the section which is good. Unlike my other uh, cross century. The main damage was to the nib. Now there's still some ink on this um, section. Let me just clean it off. Quickly, oh, there is uh, quite a bit of ink about that. Sorry about that. Just clean off there. There you go, that'll be do. As you can see, very similar design. This one actually has the glossy black. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but that's glossy black. There are a few surface scratches on it, but compared to this one, it's nowhere near as bad because this one's covered in scratches completely. There you go. Again, like I said in the video where I described that, I said that um, it used to pull a vacuum on the nib. This one does exactly the same because it's so tight. Like, if I clip that in, but for some reason it's really loose here. But it's really tight, excuse me, to pull out like that. Very tight. And it actually draws a vacuum on the nib and pulls ink onto and back onto the section. Which is a shame. You can see that there. Now this one is gold nibbed, as you can see, uh, not entirely sure how well you can see that, it says cross 14k 585 which is the gold content, 
has that different cross logo, the AT cross sign, and it says medium there. It's very hard to see on, on this light. There we go, you probably see it a bit better there. Cross 14K, depending on how good your quality of your um, YouTube resolution is set to. Now if you, as you can probably see, is very scratched. Now I'm not sure why that is. I think because uh, before I got this uh, ink cloth, which I used to wipe up ink on it, um, uh, I used a paper towel, and I believe the paper towel was very hard and scratchy for some reason. I'm not entirely sure how, but it, it apparently scratched the nib when I was cleaning it off. Because it's obviously solid gold, so that's going to scratch easily. I just need, I probably need to just go over it with a polishing gold polishing cloth. I'll just have to see if I can find that again. But yeah. Gold. Now, as I said, this pen is gold filled. However, they're supposed to say gold filled on them. This one doesn't. I'm not entirely sure why. Either it's not gold filled, it's just like gold coloured. Because it just says cross made in Ireland. Whereas this one says gold... Uh, rolled 14k gold rolled this is a 10k gold filled and this one says silver plate tonight this one didn't say anything which is interesting but i don't believe they just did a stainless steel one which had just a had a gold nib on it in the first place and it has a different feeling to the uh, other one it feels a lot in more interesting and a lot more premium i don't know if that's because it's less scratched but it just feels different i don't know why this bit here is gold on the band as opposed to the other one which was silver and this one also has but for some reason it has a silver bit here which is interesting I'm not sure why I keep getting ink on myself because it has drawn a bit out like I said which is a shame it has been a bit silver there for some reason I don't know why now when I first had this nib it had vast issues it was so dry extremely dry um, which was really annoying I've just covered in ink. Oops. Oh well, that's fine. Trait of a fountain pen user. I had some very very dry issues. Now, as you can see, that slit is very close together. Very tight. However, when I first got it, it was so tight. Like, there was literally nothing you can do about it. Uh, and for some reason, the nib was bent down. I'm actually just going to quickly grab some paper and see if I can draw that. Really sorry about that, I just had to grab some paper and there's also no other way I can actually put this uh, with my tripod and my computer in the way. So I'm going to have to do it at this angle, which is uh, kind of strange. So if that annoys you, um, please uh, don't be alarmed. So when I first got the pen, like I was saying, it was really dry. So if I just draw how the nib looked, so this is uh, where the feed is. I hope you can see this. The pen, and as you can see, uh, that's where the nib comes up to and it comes up like this and then the feed, and then and then it's flat there, however it was bent down, like this. Then the feed comes up and then meets it up like that. Now, that was a bit of an over-exaggeration. It wasn't more at that angle. It was a slightly less angle, but as I say, it was bent down. And as I had another pen here, that wasn't didn't look like that, did it? This one doesn't look like it. It doesn't bend down at all. So I was like, okay, that's really confusing. It just knocked something over on my desk there, ignore that. And it made it really dry. When you looked at the tines under a microscope, uh, under a macro lens or something, not a microscope, they're supposed to taper down like this gently, ever so gently, until the end. However, mine tapered down until they touched. And then this is where the uh, end of the nib is, and they touched all the way up until there. I do apologise, my drawing isn't very good. And obviously that's an issue, because ink can't really flow down. Obviously it's not that big as a thing, but they do touch when they come to the end. My drawing isn't very good, I do apologise for this. Um, if you looked at it from the underside, like so, you can see that there is clearly a slit there, where the ink can travel down. When I first had it, um, this is the bottom of the feed, and this is the nib, comes up, obviously. This is where the thing was. You couldn't see anything there. You could just about see one where the tipping material was, but it was so close together, you couldn't actually see it. And it's funny how it actually resides on the um, 
where the line of the paper is, but you couldn't actually see anything there, so that was just looked solid. So obviously the times were way too tight together. Now I ha obviously it's dangerous to do work on it, but obviously I'm not going to send this into a nibmeister anytime soon. So I managed to get it bent out, so the nib looked like this. Obviously flat again, that's how the nib looks in the thing, and then the feed comes up like this. So I managed to get it flat like the other cross pen was that I have. Which was good, obviously, so the tines looked more like how they should do and tapered down slowly and then still had a little tiny gap at the uh, tipping material, you know. Obviously that's an awful drawing, but yeah. So they actually tapered down until they actually came apart. However, it still had startup issues, because if you looked at the inside of the tines, they look like this. Which obviously isn't good, because that's where the ink is supposed to come out of there. Obviously, if the tines look like that, no ink's going to come through. So I had to f kind of bend down the uh, inside of the, the tines to a point where it did look like that. I used some plastic pliers, but I still believe that caused some scratching on it. So now the tines look like this. I don't think they're perfect, but again, obviously ink can now travel through here a lot easier and onto the page than it could before. Now that is why you may see a bit of deformation in the gold uh, if you look at it upon light. And obviously there's some scratches and I'm sure that I caused some more scratches doing that. Now let's get rid of this because it's absolutely atrocious. But yeah, a bit of drawing with a fountain pen, obviously. Interesting. So it's a lot drier than I would want it to be. It's a lot drier than this one. I have managed to get it a lot wetter than it was originally and it actually starts up instantly now compared to the other one compared to what it was like before, sorry. And it's still not as wet as I'd like it again, but it writes, and it's now my daily writer using a bit of Waterman Serenity Blue, like I said, in the converter. Because I prefer to write in blue, 100%. I always love writing in blue, because it's my favorite uh, ink color. And I always used to have a disposable pen, uh, which I mentioned in the video I talked about this, and this is my black pen. But obviously now that I've got this, Oh, I just knocked the camera, sorry about that. This one has black ink in it now. Very nice pen. I'm not entirely sure if it's the gold filled version, but I'm assuming it is because it has a very different feeling of metal to the chrome one. And it feels more like this. It feels more like this. And it feels more like the silver plated one compared to the, so it couldn't just be like chrome, uh, gold colored chrome plated, you know, I don't think. And obviously, why would it have a gold nib if it wasn't the gold filled version? Because I don't think they did a gold nib on the standard version. But very nice design nib. Shame about the scratches. I'm going to try and get a silver polishing cloth on it. See if we can actually tidy it up a bit nicer. That's basically it for this pen. It's basically exactly the same. Same finial. This one's got a shiny bit. Same clip, like so, as the other one. If you want to know more into the details about the design of it, go watch the one about the uh, the chrome version. That's about it for this review. I've uh, talked about how I got the pen, uh, some issues I had with it initially, and how I rectified that, and now how it turned into my daily writer. And I, of course I keep it in the pen loop. But like I said, this is, oh, I just knocked the camera again, sorry. Like I said, this is um, the probably the final se a video in the series for now, because I do uh, hope to get a pen for my birthday, However, that is in March, so I'm probably not going to be able to do anything a uh, video like this until then. However, I'm going to do a video, uh, not in this series, but just in another series, of comparing all the pens in this pen looper that I have. Um, basically, I'm going to do a video on that. So if you did make it to the end of this video, um, like I said, this is going to be a slightly longer one because uh, I've done the... I had to cut out a bit and get some paper, so sorry about that. This is basically, um, I just want you to uh, comment down below, gold filled. Because I don't know if it's actually gold filled or not, just comment that gold filled down below. Uh, just so I know if you've actually watched the end of the video. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned to the next video where I compare all these, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.